Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the council meeting uh, here on Monday, the 28th of March, 2022. This meeting is being visually and audio recorded for publication on the Thatcham Town Council YouTube channel. There we go. All uh, right, so first item on the agenda, apologies for absences. Apologies received from councillors Mike Cole, Mark Lillycrop, and Christine Rice. <coughs> Chairman, uh, may I also include you on those comments, please? Okay, thank you. Uh, item two, declarations of interest. No, nobody's interested. Okay. Uh, item three, public question time. No receipt, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, minutes to take and read and confirm as accurate the minutes of the meeting held on the 31st of January 2022. Uh, Jeffrey? I to take them as a true record. Thank you very much. That final second. Thank you very much. All those in favour? Anyone against? Any abstentions? Well, I should have voted, but I uh, was okay. uh, popped out for a minute. Thank you. Uh, right, item five, we've got a presentation uh, from Community United West Berkshire, uh, and I'll ask for permission to allow members of the public to speak at this meeting. <coughs> that receive a seconder. Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you very much. So I would like to ask if, if Alice uh, Punjabi Clifton, uh, Director of the Work for the Community West Berkshire, along with Carol Jackson and Georgia, would like to come up and Thanks. 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 Well done. 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 Well who we are part of community, well, we are Community United. Yes. We have a third director, Julian Smith Hook, which he couldn't be with us tonight. We just come to do a quick presentation um, about us. We've now been in existence for 18 months, uh, working across the whole of West Berkshire. Next slide. Thank you. Here's a slight, a uh, quick video. It's embedded. No? Oh, don't worry, just go to the next one. <laughs> just go to the next one, no worry. I've done the introductions as to who we are. What we are about, right? we are an organisation that basically we've been set up, we set ourselves up to really represent the ethnic diversity across West Berkshire. And when we say West Berkshire, we mean the whole of West Berkshire, including coming out to my side, being on the eastern edge of the district. Uh, West Berkshire has changed and it's growing and we've got a lot of communities that have come into our community but we don't actually always recognize that they're there because they're hidden they're small uh, a lot of people are all very professional they work um, so there's a lot of need that with and COVID has brought out some of that when we've been talking to the food bank Next one. I, we pulled some figures from the last census for Thatcham to really highlight the diversity. This is out of date. The new census figures won't be available till sometime in summer this year. But it just gives a breakdown of the communities that we have within our own community that we don't even, sometimes don't recognise. Um, here we've pulled, you'll see the these are all the various walls. Unfortunately, it hasn't come up on the bottom. I've actually, yeah, broken things down into ward level. Um, these are for you. You can have a copy of this uh, that to actually tell you where communities are. But this, bear in mind, this is how people identify themselves. Okay. Now I class myself as being Black British because I am born and bred British. So you know, but I Caribbean side. We come. Um, that sort of angle here. So that just gives a flavour of the communities that you've got within your own community. Next one. 
So, so far, we've been very busy. We've done a lot of work. We're all, we're all volunteers. Um, and we have really reached out to the ethnic diverse communities across West Berkshire. Part of our role is to give them a voice, to actually hear from them what their needs are, and to feed that back up again, so that we are very being a supportive organisation. We sign posts, but we are an organisation that asks the difficult questions. And that's generally our frame, framework that we work under. We don't look for the easy solutions. We look for the things that are a bit harder. Can we have, and then one of the key things we do, so our, which is a big thing, is about working with the council to change the terminology from BAME to ethnic diverse communities. We started that work before the government even started doing it. But now the government's report at the end of last year is it everything now is people referred to as ethnic rather than the BAME community. Basically mentioned about that, who we are, we're independent, etc. Can we go to the next one? Well, I've done this twice, sorry about that. <laughs> um, can I talk about asking the difficult questions? One of the events which we held last year was around FGM. This came about because being a school governor, looking at the curriculum for the following here, sex education is embedded in all our school education from the time a child enters school. How that in primary school level, how that's dealt with is down to the school. I had a shock when the school where I am a governor said that we were having somebody coming in to talk about FGM. Now I'm in Burfield and I said, why? It was not something that I actually thought was relevant. But they pointed out that we are very close to Reading and we don't always know. And that for me was a learning curve because I don't know. It's not something I've experienced. I don't know anybody who has experienced it. Doesn't come from my culture, so I knew zilch. But it is very right and it's hidden. So we held this event working together with Oxford Against Cutting and some of the outcomes from that was really amazing. Um, and it just took me back to when I was growing up and we were thinking about young girls from the Asian community leaving the UK to go home for forced marriages. So until that happened, it wasn't something that we were even aware of. But, but now these sort of things are creeping in because of the diversity of communities that we've got coming in. They have their own cultures and sometimes culture is very prevalent because it is a way of life and it's not of them, something that we as British communities will be thinking about. So we do ask those questions, we do raise it to really see how we can support within the community as well as noticing what is going on. And that one was a really prevalent one because we had a survivor who actually spoke about it and from all angles, from the cultural side as well as the impact side. We'll hand over to us. So, so apart from the online thing, so we did quite a lot of events because of COVID, we did a lot of online um, events. And then after once things sort of settled, we decided, you know, we were asked uh, and commissioned um, by West Berkshire Council to do the community testing. So we were going around West Berkshire and talk and talking to all the communities. So one of them was, um, so did you know that we had a new Tamil school? That's the, so we have a Tamil school that has got at least about um, 35 students. And they, they, they are, because they don't have a venue, they, are, they do everything with Zoom. Because that's one of the things, a lot of the communities do not have venues, apart from the Muslim community who has got a mosque, or the Swakshaw Muslim Center has got a, but apart from that, there are no other communities that have got venues. Next slide, please. So we were also part of, so during COVID, um, um, when the vaccination program started, 
we, we were turned on and you know you had this vaccine hesitancy then it was the ethnic community that were not engaging and things. so we went out to the communities we reached out to the communities and went to the mosque got them um, engaged to have the vaccination program so and so our, the numbers increased so it's, the communities are not hesitant it's just the fact that they did not you know, they want to get to come to them. It's a lot, lot easier. And, you know, it's, it's a familiar environment. So they felt it was better. Now, I do think in any event, it's better to go to them rather than bringing them to us. Then, so I went to, so like in everything that we do, we go out to events. We do, so we had the honor. So this is the Malayali community from South India. So it's from Kerala. They have an event. So this, I, I, we went out to them to do the community testing. Next slide. And I'm sure, May, you know this event? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, uh, so last September, we had, so once COVID sort of, we were coming out of it, we, we started, the, um, started doing an event, a community event. And we did the one community event at, at the Falkland uh, Cricket Club. And we had about 500 people attend. It was a very, and uh, the group of um, players that we had, we had six teams. Um, and, you know, in the end, Thames Valley, please, one. I think they gave, everyone gave in to them. <laughs> so that's them. And then, so what are we doing now? So we are continuing to do the positive side. So we are trying to, the, the whole conversation is, it's about integration. So we learn about each other's culture. So that is very important. So that's why we're still doing that. We also been um, invited by the Thames Valley Police to um, help them with the hate crime. Because hate crime is increasing in West Berkshire. So we are trying to look at it and how to make it better. And uh, so we've been building this. So we've been supporting the new testing. And also, um, we've also been supporting the new arrivals of the African community in West Berkshire as well. So when they arrived, we sort of knew where they were. We went out to have a conversation with them of how to integrate because they were stuck in a hotel, even though they were give, you know, given an opportunity to go out, but they still were not comfortable. Um, and they did not understand what, cult uh, what our culture is like. So, so we were supporting them. So we had conversations about um, housing, about um, uh, with employment, education. education. So we had all those conversations. It's very different for them to what we have in the UK. So this is our community testing van that was going around. I'm sure some of you have seen it. And then <laughs> one of the things that we are now involved with, which which um, the man knows is also the West Berkshire, West Berkshire Asylum Seekers as well. So apart from um, the council supporting the Afghan community, refugees, these are you guys know that there are, they're completely different. They are definitely the asylum. So we've got two hotels in West Berkshire at the moment that are with the asylum seekers. And one of them is in your agency hotel. And so we've been working with the uh, West Berkshire Muslim Center, we've been working with the Refugee Support Health Watch and uh, Care for Calais to try and see how we can make it better for them in that hotel, uh, what activities are available. And I am aware that, you, you know, the, that you, you've offered them the, the, the field at a low way, and they're playing football, which is lovely to see. Uh, because, you know, and the more they start integrating, it's lovely. And, I'm, and they are coming out. But it's just understanding that we welcome them, you know, because they do feel, I mean, there is, there is, if I'm allowed to say, there is a difference in how support is given to the, 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 the hotels that are being cared for by the council to the ones who are the asylum seekers. That's definitely. So we just need to, and that's, and they don't get the same funding and privileges like the, the refugees. And so it's so another one we were part of the, um, the mosque as well. So we are very much involved in the next slide. So we also went up to the churches as well. So we've been involved with the churches as well to try and um, uh, yeah, what, uh, talk about um, community testing. Then one of the things that are one of our successes is also that we had a program whereby the vaccination 
um, team came to one venue and there was nobody, um, the people who were allocated to come to that venue did not turn up. So we as Community United ran the, in the South Indian community, 40 people turned up just to have the vaccination within an hour. So, you know, they weren't hesitant. So they show the community wants to be engaged. That was an example for us, to, just, uh, to be honest. And, you know, we've now got the Afghanistanists here, we've got Syrians now as well, and now we're coming to the Ukrainians as well. And they are coming, so we're just waiting for them to see what, what is also, how we can help them. So our, our future plans are the vaccination program, testing program, though the programs are ending, but there are still communities that are not um, taking the vaccine. We will still continue with that conversation as well. And we are also part of this whole COVID thing. We've been um, um, given uh, some money to help with the uh, Royal Baksha uh, Hospital with their Bliss project, which is the Baksha Long COVID project. How to engage with the community to get information out there to recognize what Long COVID is like and how to get treatment quickly. Then we still have the, um, our yearly one community cricket. And then we are also building our capacity. So part of the Bliss project, we've also now employed a part-time coordinator, and we're also still recruiting volunteers to work with us. We also have a program which we are uh, about to develop. So in is it 2020 or yeah, it is, I've lost that. 2020 September, we launched Community United, part of a belonging project, whereby we are looking at the community to come together, look at integration. So we are, we are about to set up a, a, a program whereby we are, we're getting all the diversities together. So possibly looking at, an, uh, I think you, I would say a gallery, an exhibition, we don't know kind of thing, but we have gone out to the community, say, what do you want? There's also conversation with uh, Corn Exchange to see whether we can do events, cultural events with them as well. This is all about being um, part of the community and belong. And then, so this, uh, this is, uh, as I said, this is part of the long COVID. And we've been part of this, do you know about the street safe? And this is about the um, uh, violence against women. So we've been part of that as well. The conversations about important to identify areas in anywhere in West Berkshire that is not safe. So we've been part of that. And then we've been uh, talking about violence against women. One of the things that has been very um, aware to us is um, especially women who have wear coverings, hijab, and people have turned around and said, take it off, and things like that. So those are verbal conversations. So we are, we are working with the schools to try and see where, you know, um, how we can make it better for them. And then, as I said, in the long COVID. <coughs> And one community that's going to happen. That is going to happen. We were planning to have that in June, when during the um, uh, Queen's uh, Platinum. But I think everybody is planning to do something yet. So we might, um, uh, depending on where the venue is going to be, because we're at the moment we're looking at a venue to play the cricket. So I have talked to Thatcham mm -hmm. Cricket to see whether we could have hold it hosted here. But also with the other thing that we also, so Georgina is also having a conversation with us because Georgina is um, have possibly, I think now we all are having a discussion of having the family fun day to try to bring the communities together. So that's also a conversation. So I'm having a conversation with her on Thursday. Yeah. So how you can help? Well, you know, like everybody else, we all ask for funding um, and also publicize us. Because one of the things a lot of people are not aware that we are around, and we are for the um, to you know here for the people, the, uh, especially the seldom heard. We've got, uh, if you had can have us in you know, your newsletters, that'd be lovely. We do a lot of social media, and also invite us to your events. How we can help you? We can help you by translations, help you with proofreading. So one of the things that during COVID. To um, have uh, during COVID was we asked the council, especially West Bank Council, to translate materials in different languages. 
you know, that's also one of the most important things that was important. So, and also we are asking them to now have um, a website that's translatable as well. So if you look at our website, it's translatable in different languages. And that is something that I think people have to try, you know, look at it because I think, you know, that will help communities to integrate as well. And then um, support council with um, case loads involving the community. So if there's anything that you want us to have a discussion with the community, we're happy to work with. And then increase awareness of Passion Town Council and the services that we have. So as I said, Community United is very much diversity is a fact. Equality is a choice. Inclusion is an action. Belonging is an outcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions? What, um, was there nothing at all like this before you woke up one day and said, I know we must do something? No, in, I mean, in West Berkshire, we've had various iterations in my time as um, some of you know, I was district councillor for 12 years. Um, we have had various reiterations of it. Um, we had the All Together project. Um, I think there was an, another one before that. But they were tended to be very sort of new breed focus at that time. Um, and it was more, I feel, that didn't reach out to the communities in the same way. Held events, which were, were very good events, but there wasn't that outreach element. And I think our knowledge as, as, as directors as well makes a big, big difference of that you know, we, we have, <coughs> them, you know, and we can understand the communities as well, how they relate. So, you know, like for example, one of the things I never shared with you guys is the fact that um, with the uh, Regency Hotel at the moment, there is conversation with West Berkshire Muslim Center on trying to get the community to the, um, the Muslim community to the West Berkshire Muslim Center for Ramadan. And, and that, that's been a big, big issue in the sense that um, to get them there, we need transport. And that has been a big problem. So, um, we're, so we are looking at that, those kind of conversations at the moment. Chairman, I, I spoke to Karen Reed, you will know Karen, uh, for 45 minutes this morning regarding Regency Park and, and the issues there. I'm going to be asking Karen to come and talk to Paul Karen. So just on that, on that particular issue, you mentioned Afghanistan people there and Syrians. El Salvador. Yeah, El Salvador. Um, and and yeah. without going into the difficulties here, um, the, 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 there's boredom there. There's terrible boredom oh, yes. because they, they can't do anything really in the community. Um, so some have got good English but they're actually re restricted from going out and earning money. You know, there's a lot of constraints on them, and it must be very difficult to be in a hotel day after day after day without anything to occupy them. It's good to hear they've got a lot of games that they've uh, been able I mean, to get down I think, there. I think Karen's but, doing English lessons as well. I think they are doing English lessons. Yes, there. But right. the, the thing that they have is the fact that they get up in the morning, go and have breakfast, come back into, the, into their whole rooms and have their meals. Yes, and they're they're literally, no, there's no nothing wrong, nothing, nothing. No, so no, there's no, no way for them to sit together no. and have um, um, a, a sense of community. Yes, yes any very much. So you know, we've been working, we've been going in there on a regular, regular basis just to watch what is happening. But that's where the Muslim community. Now, Karen's is saying in. she's in three days a week there. She's yeah. getting more volunteers to be able to support. And I guess you're keying into that, are you? Yes. Yeah. I mean, Karen. So we we've got a group of us, Karen. So that's what Careful Calais is also part of the group. So we're trying trying to, but the Muslim community has been very keen to do the Ramadan, uh, mm -hmm. and because you know, the time of food and everything. So, but they want is, is to try and get, and they've been trying to get funding to get transport buses to, to get them there. And that has not been- To get them where, the mosque? The mosque. Yes, yes, the okay. mosque. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Jim. Um, thank you very much for a very interesting presentation and disturbing, I might say as well. Um, just, but just to continue on the theme you've just had there about transport to the mosque. Um, I had an email today from the volunteer center in Newbury because I'm a, one of the drivers of the handy bus asking us to, uh, uh, and I'm sure that, you know, I've, give, I've given him dates when I can do it. And, I, and I'm sure that he, what, what was intriguing though, that it was only to take them there. It wasn't to bring them back. I'm 
Because now I know that you're the organisation behind it. I just wonder how are they going to get home? So what has happened is that we've asked, so one of the things that we identified is the fact that I think more people would be happy to take them there. And because of, by the time they finish, it's quite late. Yeah. And a lot of people won't like the idea yeah. of come, going out there. So the, the community themselves have said that they will do that. But one of the reasons why we are talking about the importance of the of, of the transport is also because we've had issues in the sense that they've seen people together walking about and the communities have complained to the police. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. trying to support us, yeah, yeah. us safeguard both yeah. groups. No, I just wonder how you'll get them home, how the community yeah, will get them how, home. That's, that's how they're planning well, to they'll hire, hire buses. Um, so the yeah, other attendees. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other, other people that, will. That will be my other question, if I may, is a more technical one. Could, could, could you go back to the slide that showed the, um, the histogram of different communities in, in Thatcham? <laughs> that, that one, thank you. It's just the 83 figure. That happens to be my ward, Thatcham South and Crookham, so that's why it hit me. I just want to understand it, really. It, is it saying that eighty-three percent of the Asian yeah, and British in, in numbers? In numbers, these are the actual numbers, numbers. numbers. Oh, they're, they're numbers. numbers. They're not numbers, percentages. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The numbers in the twenty eleven census. Okay, but even so, quite so. Double the other wards live in Thatcham. So I think I think that a lot of people don't realise until you see when we have the breakdown that yeah. there is communities out there, but they don't see it. Yeah. Um, and Did you hear you say that's the 2011 census? Yes. That will have changed a lot. Oh, yes. Yes. Hmm. Oh, yes. And then the, the additions that you've got with the, the hotels, people from the hotels as well, they're not part of the numbers. Well, they won't be until they're properly residential here, yeah, don't forget. They're not resident as the, in the hotel. And there will be place placements into families and into other areas, won't they? Um, if I'm allowed to say this, Based on the experience that I have, we've had in in, in um, Reading, the the people have been in the hotels for two, over two years. Yes, I, I'm aware of that. Yeah, so uh, you, know, you say they are resident in that respect. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, So and also, um, the doctor today, Tarana said that is also you know there's shortages of housing, so we don't know whether that's going to happen as well. Councillor mm -hmm. Fiona, would it be possible <clears throat> because I see there are three groups towards the right hand end that, are, that start with black African Caribbean black British dot 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 and obviously there's three different things that come after the dot dot dots I don't know if you know what they are off the top of your head what the what further classifications oh, yeah. get yeah the the third um, fourth or fifth from the right I mean what the classifications are but it went into sort of more of the Caribbean ethnic type countries, I think, was how it is. These are all the standard government. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I maybe ought to be more informed on it, but I couldn't work out what, what came next. It was, a, I just wondered if you happened to. I, I can send it through. I've got, I've got it on my computer. I can send it through. I mean, the one, one of these, I'm, I'm really interested. I mean, it's, it's a shame that our census haven't gone through because we would really love to see what's the difference and do a comparison, because uh, I'm sure it's gone up. Because, you know, based on our findings, um, even though the 20, 2011 showed turned around since five to six percent, in fact, our findings were more than, more than that, um, and that's been our interesting. Um, you know, it has been interesting to us, and definitely there is community. I mean, I don't understand how we can say it's less because when you've got Vodafone uh, up there, and we've got lots of other you know communities coming in from there, and we've got a lot of people from Reading working here as well. So uh, you know, and our health service. It's got a lot of ethnic communities. Okay, thank you. Councillor Plank. Thank you. Uh, the question I was going to ask is that at various times there have been quite large groups of um, contractors from overseas in working for various companies. I just wonder, wonder if you've got a feel for what proportion of the uh, diverse community in West Berkshire currently is resident, is, is living here rather than just here, here uh, temporarily on contract. That we don't know because that's that will be from their employment side. Yeah, just a so a lot of companies, um, if you, you know, mm. Bay is no longer here, but when you take the larger ones, they do have people that come on, come over mm. on contract. So far, my estimation is it's a very small percentage in terms of their overall employees. 
Right, but I won't be able to give you. So in, in other words, this is pretty representative of the of the living population. This is the living. This is the living population. So I think, it, in fact, the, the the census you were you were counted even if you were there for one. If you were yeah, there for one day. It's done on that yeah. that day. Yeah, so it would include contractors. Oh, your census, yeah. your census, that's a, a, a small proportion, and this is representative of the people who are. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? <clears throat> well, should we be signposting people to you? On our own. <coughs> yeah, that'd be lovely if you can. I'm not saying that's a decision. I'm saying it's something we could think about. If our community and there's hundreds of people there, um, we're looking for how do you get that awareness that they know you're a, a people to go to. That takes yeah. time to yeah, get that word does. of mouth through. Yeah. You know. I mean, I mean, we are visible on social media kind of So we've been putting out, and the other things also, we put out cultural events and also like- um, No, 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 I'm not decrying anything you've done. I'm saying, how do we raise it? Yeah, no. yeah. No, I mean, that, that's why we've come to you guys today. Ow. <laughs> uh, lovely. Uh, oh, Councillor. That's another question then. So you, you said that the Muslim community and probably some other communities, uh, non-UK non communities are, have, have their own community cent centres and arrangements. They don't have. They well, don't. Then you say some of them have. Yes. Uh, the question I'm going to ask is, which are the large groups that are not that don't have facilities available to them? It's not. It's not about. Um, oh. Most of the facilities are based around the faith yeah. aspect. So if you take the um, African Afro Caribbean communities, they would tend to be part of the wider church, mm -hmm. Christian wider churches across yeah. across the area. Um, but when it comes to the Pacific faith, mm -hmm. being a Muslim, then, then you know we have the two mosques that represent yeah. that. So the others will be embedded in terms of the faith groups. But also the like the Indian community, for example, the the, the Hindus, they all because we haven't got a temple here, they they tend to go out. So in Reading, Swindon, Oxford, so they go out. So so we tend to go out to them to say. Hey guys, we are here, family. But a lot of this is because we don't have facilities. You know, I mean, we yeah. would. Our dream is to have a cultural hub, uh, and so that all communities can come and learn about each other. And that that is that is the dream. Um, also, part of the, the challenges Alice is saying is that you know, quite a lot of the other groups would go to Swindon, would you know, would go to Oxford. We'd go to Reading, some quite a few also go to London. Mm. So yeah. it is um, it is a bit more challenging to work out the details. Thank you. Anybody? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I should point out, actually, I'm very remiss of me, but um, what we've got here, um, sorry, I've got your name again. Carol. Carol, Carol. Carol. yeah. Uh, Carol's actually a deputy lieutenant of Berkshire. Wow. So, um, oh. We are very honoured indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, I've got a minute. On then. No. Yeah. Change the last um, well, lovely. Okay, then, if we can um, move on now to item six uh, to receive reports from the mayor and the deputy mayor. Uh, I'll go first, as is. Um, so, I've got that. So, that there. Um, on Thursday, I went to the Kennett School Performing Arts uh, event. And one of the, the jobs I was given was to judge the art competition. Um, I mean, well, I say unfortunately, my daughter had a piece in there, so I, I had to abstain from that actual judging of the year nines, uh, but she did get second place. <laughs> <laughs> the other judge had her down as far. I don't know what happened. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that again, that was a, a wonderful event. Uh, you know, it just shows the diversity. Um, Councillor Lister was there also for the performance, um, but it just shows the diversity. And, and the, I have to say, the young children of today, you know, what they're capable of, uh, you know, far exceeds anything uh, we were ever doing uh, when I was in school. 
Um, then on the Saturday, the, the 12th, I went to the, the Bean and Wind Orchestra at St. Mary's Church. And it was uh, Robert Roscoe was retiring after 15 years uh, of leading that orchestra. And I don't know if any of you have heard it, but I was actually, uh, the first time I heard them was down in um, the Baptist church just before Christmas. And quite frankly, I was blown away with the skill. Uh, you yeah, know, they were absolutely wonderful. So I'm sure that whilst Robert has stepped down and he was awarded uh, a mayor's badge, as you can see in this uh, photograph, um, and uh, we, a little plaque to, to commemorate his uh, years of service. But um, Robert had, whilst he's done 15 years with the orchestra, he's been within West Berkshire for goodness knows how many years. And, and there was one little story I have to tell you. He was driving down to school where he taught uh, and he saw a young man in a rather dilapidated car, it, it was the report. Uh, and he saw a young man, one of his students, walking along, carrying his trumpet, and he pulled up and said to him, let me give your trumpet a lift to school, keep it dry, because he didn't, <laughs> he said, if he'd got in the car, he wouldn't have been able to go any further, but, so the trumpet got a lift to school, but not the, uh, the student. Um, <coughs> then the, the memorial quiz, uh, another couple of councillors were, were at that quiz, and I can say that the team I joined, uh, <laughs> If I said we finished second, second uh, from last, that is. Um, but it was a it was a wonderful <laughs> event. They raised a lot of uh, money for the for the the bowl. Well, why not say for the bowls? It was for the memorial trust. Um, but it was a lovely event. So I would highly recommend anybody going along to those. Um, Friday extract the opening of their apprentice academy. Um, as the mayor of, Tha of Newbury said, you have a very high tech company here in Thatcham, uh, and we do indeed. Uh, I mean, X-Track, when I spoke with them, um, I said, yeah, of course, I said, do you, do you make gearboxes for the Formula One cars? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, who do you make them for? He said, well, it's easier for me to tell you who we don't make them mm -hmm. for, which is Ferrari and Mercedes. Other than that, all the other Formula One gearboxes all come from X-Track, as well as the whole American sports market. So they are indeed a very high-tech company, uh, and they were just opening up their new facility purely for their apprentices. Um, but when I say just purely for their apprentices, they have uh, apprenticeships going there right across you know, a, a broad spectrum. They have finance apprenticeships uh, as well as the engineering side. So it was really a, a nice thing to be able to do. And having come from an engineering background myself, I was very interested. Um, then on the Saturday, uh, Can It Go Guiding, a world thinking day. Um, they was down in Stoke <laughs> School, and it is one of these events that um, you know the kids all come along. Uh, you know the, the parents drop them off, uh, and the guiders take them. Uh, you know, and they give them lots of experiences. They're doing lots of things throughout the day, and it really is nice to see uh, that sort of event going on. And the fact that Spurkoff School just handed the place over to them and said, "Yeah, fine, you go ahead." So it was really nice there. Um, and then you can see the soft tap dancers with Sonia Brown. Sonia does a lot of work um, with the council organizing events and uh, at the Thatcham Festival uh, where they had a, a big a production going on down in Kennet School. She was the lady who pulled it all together. And again, you know, with students from all over uh, Thatcham and some who have obviously come in from Trinity School as well. But it, that was a, a truly wonderful event. And, so I just went along there to see Sonia and one of the groups that she she um, organises. Um, then on the 14th, although it's not on the, the list here, we have the Flag Day where we had, um, it was the United Nations Flag Day, I'm oh, sorry, Commonwealth uh, Flag Day. And we had three schools from Francis Bailey, Spurcroft and Parsons Down come here. They all made up their own uh, uh, Commonwealth flag and it was a, a wonderful event. And I'll, I'll leave the, the deputy mayor to tell you a little bit more about that. Then on the Friday, Gardner and Leader Cake Charity Sale. Um, you'll notice on the photograph, they've got the red, blue, uh, yellow, there was another color as well, but they had within their departments, they were having a competition. So of course I had to buy a cake from each department so, <laughs> so that nobody uh, was getting preferential treatment, but it is, I have to say they were very nice too. 
Um, I did manage all of them. Um, then on Saturday, uh, they had the Barfield handbell ringers. Uh, it was a, a memorial, really, for, for Bill Butler, who led that group for goodness knows how many years. Uh, and it was a wonderful uh, event again. I mean, the, the Barfield handbell ringers do us the honor of coming along every year at Christmas time. Uh, and it just, you know, the, the, the ambience they provide at that particular event, you know, just have the, have the handbell ringers. Uh, yeah, it's always something I really look forward to. So I was very pleased to go along to that. And then on Friday, I was at Trinity School for their production of Greece. Uh, the, the head uh, teacher there was delighted, uh, Mrs. Wilson, or Dr. Wilson, I should say, uh, was delighted uh, to be able to open up uh, the academy again because uh, you know, this was the first production they've had since the start of the COVID. Uh, and so for them to put on this performance uh, was very welcome. And I have to say again, uh, yeah, it was a wonderful event. Uh, and then it just brings me to Saturday, spring into Thatcham. Um, I, as you can see, had a, a t-shirt especially printed for the occasion with Frankie says relax on the back as well. So I got two for the price of one. Uh, but these uh, couple here, um, they already had their t-shirts. So, so we say stowed away for years. Um, but it was a lovely event and something that uh, you know, I think would be nice if we were able to have that once more, if it almost became uh, an annual event, much like the event that we had, um, you know, the Thatcham Fest off. Uh, when we first locked, uh, oh, say, shut down the, the high street, uh, that proved to be such a huge success. And I, I think it's like everything else. So these things will go and grow. And, uh, you know, they were always going to get teething problems with it. But... Um, you know, it was a good start. So that was my time from, oh gosh, when was it? February the 1st to March the 27th. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Well, only the one in that period, Chairman, which we had good weather for, the raising of the flag for the Commonwealth uh, Day. Um, and the children did enjoy it. They came in here, they from the three schools, they they put together a bunch of uh, flags, which I hope they were taking back to school. And I think we took some photos of them. Um, asked some very pertinent questions. This is primary schools, but you know, they were on the ball. And uh, I think they went away feeling that they learned something and they were taking it back to their school. So thank you for letting me accompany you with that, Chairman, um, thank you. Mr. Mayor. And um, just uh, as an aside, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, Councillor um, Brooks also suggested that they take away with them the uh, the letter from the, the, the head of the Commonwealth, um, because there were, again, quite a few words in there that they might not have understood, and, and the, the, the schools embraced that. So, uh, again, it was a nice learning experience for them also. Right then, item seven, <coughs> approval and adoption of committee. Yes. To receive and consider adoption of the following committee minutes. Item A, recreation for minutes. Minutes, April 21st, March 2022. Thank you, Chairman. Now I'd like to propose minutes of the RNA, uh, the freshman and meaning use of the month under the 21st. Thank you very much. Is that fine seconder? That's where I Jeff. Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. Uh, ICB Planning and Highways Committee minutes, 15th of March, 21st of March. Thank you. I'd like to propose the uh, adoption of those two sets of minutes, which are quite closely related in the content. Okay, thank you. I'd like to approve the second of the second of all those in favour. Thank you very much. And item C, Town Centre Committee, minutes dated 14th of March. Um, Mr. Mayor, I like to propose the adoption of the minutes of the for the Town Centre Committee. Thank you very much. All those uh, that received a seconder, Councillor um, yeah, Cotton, all those in favour? Thank you very much. Um, right, item eight engagement with consultant undertaking work for the West Berkshire Council plan, local plan review for North East Thatcher. <coughs> um, you have the, the letter. Um, which is in my pack here somewhere. Yes, yes, we have the letter here. Is anybody, uh, I mean, it, this was discussed. We had a, um, an emergency 
Planning and Highways Committee meeting where this was discussed. Did you want to add anything to that, Councillor? Uh, thank you. I'd just like to ask through you to the clerk if we've had any response. I think I know the answer, but <laughs> sorry, I think we had an acknowledgement, but no, but no substantive response. Thank you. Um, yeah, so anyway, that, that this was the letter that went in, and uh, hopefully we will get some response from them sooner or later. Um, sooner. Yeah, <laughs> sooner. Uh, nine, uh, remote access to meetings. Um, we have uh, the camera set up. Um, so we wish to consider the opportunity to allow remote access to meetings via video link for guest presenters, residents, councillors are able to attend, attend or wishing to observe. Um, what we really need to do is to set up a, a protocol of what uh, would be permissible uh, and anything that other councillors felt would not be permissible. So um, we have uh, something that I think Councillor Lister has put forward yeah, I mean, I, I can I can uh, talk to this if you wish. Uh, yeah, if, um, if you would, uh, mind, then, um, so so, so I, I think for, for tonight the agenda item is um, the proposal. Sorry, the proposal the proposal is that uh, a policy will be drafted for consideration. Yes, yeah, so I think that's the purpose of the discussion tonight. Um, and it's just to draw attention really to the the change in practice. I mean, thank goodness we're all back at last in the chamber after such a large period of uh, disruption over the last couple of years. Uh, and with the VC facilities that we've invested in, we've now got the opportunity uh, to both record these meetings and uh, publicise them on, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and we also have the ability, of course, to invite guests, members of the public, uh, or indeed other councillors who are unable to attend in person, uh, the ability to uh, attend virtually uh, the meeting. But what we don't have yet is a sort of formal policy that just explains what those procedures are. Uh, so the, the item tonight is to propose a policy will be drafted through the, the town clerk uh, for consideration at a future meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Crumley. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, yes, I, I endorse what has been said. Perhaps uh, the uh, the brief or instructions can uh, make sure that uh, um, what is taken into account includes the, the voting rights of um, of um, councillors. If you're here, you can vote. Um, what if you're appearing um, uh, uh, via, via Zoom? Can you vote or not vote? I'm not saying what the answer should be, but that should be addressed so that we all we all know. Um, yeah, that will all be part of the, the discussion. I take Councillor Pike and then Councillor Brooks. Yeah, thank you. So I, I support what uh, has been proposed by Councillor Lister. Uh, I've taken a look through the standing orders and I believe that all of the key issues, such as the one that Councillor Crumley has raised, are already addressed in the standing orders so that there's no necessary changes. We, we may wish to make some changes to adjust them, but uh, there's nothing that is required in order to implement the uh, these proposals. And I think the policy is more to do with the external things about how it's managed, who can who can who who cannot join, how they ask to join, what the timelines are, and so on. Uh, if we need to change the way that meetings are work, meetings work themselves, then that probably would involve the standing orders. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brooks. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we shouldn't shrink from the requirement to change standing orders if that is necessary. Um, it is a matter of legal uh, uh, certainty that you cannot vote if you are not here and <coughs> you are not part of a quorum if you are not here. So as we draw up this protocol and policy, um, we on this side are particularly keen to make sure that substitutes still form a very, very important part of the council's working. Uh, because if we allow councillors to come in remotely, and we will, but under certain, or we, we will propose that they can under certain guidelines, um, I, uh, we have to be careful that we end up with a core at meeting. So we work with the clerk, won't we, Leader? Um, in order to come back with something that says this is <coughs> reflects this some better arrangements of attending meetings while making sure that their integrity is still managed uh, within the way we go forward. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Uh, just for I think 
clearly people would get that I'm going to be in favour of, of this as a concept, but I just think in the bigger picture, I think it's our responsibility to ensure that we are constantly seeking ways to make this council accessible and engaging to the broad diversity of our community uh, in terms of age, gender, ethnicity, faith, whatever it is that we're looking for, we need to be making sure that we are and not just sitting comfortably back with rules and regulations that were made in a different time. And I don't have the answers, I don't have the proposal, I'm not coming with, I think this, this and this, I just think it is our responsibility to ensure that we are constantly, even if we don't expect success, change doesn't happen if people don't start asking questions. And I think we should be asking, when did this rule about not voting person, I don't, I'm not suggesting that we get rid of it, but I think we need to understand why and the various workings of the council should be considered in terms of the way that we are making what we do, which we all believe to be valuable and making a contribution to our community, encourages other people to take part in what we do. If we look around the room, we're appealing to a certain type. <laughs> and, you know, and the one mother in the room of, of school-aged children isn't here, and that may be for many reasons, but it's often because she has challenges. And, and full council is perhaps different than committees or groups or... There is plenty that we can do that doesn't have to be, you've got to stand up when you speak in a room of middle-aged white men. Yeah, I think there's lots of stuff that we can do that we need to ask questions about. I'm not critical of it, I'm just observing that we have a group that is reflective and doing its best, but is also not necessarily exciting or interesting to the younger members of our community, for example, who could make a valuable contribution if we so chose to encourage them to do so. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I believe that uh, a lot of what you have said uh, you know, regarding items that could change are in fact embedded in, uh, in our standing orders and also <coughs> it's, it's guidance from uh, the government. You know, it's, it's one of those things yeah. that we have to be in attendance. No, no, I appreciate it. I'm not saying that we should throw everything out and become a rebel alliance. Oh, no, anyway, questions. Yeah. Um, but no, thank you very much for that. So what we will do then moving forward is to formulate uh, a, a protocol, uh, something that uh, everybody uh, can agree to. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, would we propose it in order to get this done or we'll bring it back to another meeting or I think the leader's going to work with the clerk offline, Chairman, yeah. and yeah. bring it back as a proposal to full council next time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we shall do that. And, uh, and as you say, you know, when we come back to full council uh, for the next meeting, um, Councillor Lister, having liaised with uh, the clerk, will have something for us to hopefully vote on. Uh, and, I, and I suppose if anybody has any particular uh, issues they would like considered, if you email Councillor Lister and, and we shall see what, what comes forth from that. Thank you. Um, right, that's item nine. Um, so item 10, uh, bad debt write off. Uh, this was uh, I mean, discussed with um, Adam Clark. This was a, a bad debt from a, a, a Funeral directors. Um, that's not uh, Councillor Brooks. Did you wish to? Thank you, Chairman. I, I did a bit of Googling and I couldn't find this. I think <laughs> it's all too cozy, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Good heavens. I did my stride there. I'm falling stand. It's all this protocol, isn't it, Councillor? It's up and up, bobbing up, you know. You get rid of it in a trice, wouldn't you, sir? I would that one, yeah, definitely. Okay. So I. I, I Looked at this uh, only this evening. I started to Google uh, Thatcham Funeral Care Directors, Newbury and Thatcham Fair Funeral Care Directors Limited, mm. and I didn't find them at all, mm. not even on Company's House. The one I found on Company's House was a similar name, but it was actually Newbury and Thatcham Funeral Directors Limited. Now, it couldn't be them because they were incorporated in October last year. And this debt goes back before that. So when Mr. Tibble says that 
He understands, and the words are here quite clearly, he understands that this company is no longer trading. I'd be, is now, we understand the company has now ceased trading. How do we know? There's nothing on Company's House about that organization. And if that, if that organization had existed with that name, it would still be on Company's House, even if it said it's no longer trading. So I'm a bit confused. I, I think the debt is sunk. I, I don't think we can get this back. But I can't find, I'm wondering if that we've even got the right name of the company there. Um, and when we say we understand, what, what measures do we take to know and to be able to say that? So did we get anything from the receiver of revenue to say that this company is no longer traded and there is an invoice here and you should go to the receiver to get your money? I, I just don't think there's enough detail here. Uh, but as I say, we, we won't get this money, but I'd like a more thorough report. We're writing up over a thousand pounds, Jim. Okay, thank you very much. Um, can we really, I'm just uh, following upon that and asking what the debt was. There is a shake up in the funeral services uh, industry at the moment because a lot of them have been going out and uh, selling future funerals and receiving money. And it wasn't registered under the uh, Financial Services Act to my understanding, and a lot of them are all of a sudden just folding up because they don't want to pay back money. I would say let's be a little bit more, ter could we, I request, be a bit more determined about this, find out exactly why and where they are, because there's a lot of people outside, elderly, a lot, who have gone out and paid a lot of money for funeral services and they're not going to get them. This may be part of that syndrome. I know, now, let's maybe take up the flag and say, well, could it come back and now ask what it's exactly for? Maybe be a little bit more determined. I mean, it's not a, you know, it's a thousand pounds, but it's not an unsubstantial amount of money. It's just something to consider. OK, thank you. Councillor Pike and then Councillor Fox. So uh, perhaps after the meeting, I'll, I'll show uh, Councillor Brooks uh, way back. Uh, which is a website that enables you to search through the history of websites. And this company uh, ha had the address of Lake Piper's Court. I remember the original planning application, planning and highways. And the website disappeared about different pages, disappeared somewhere between October and December last year. Uh, and if you look at the, uh, the, the one officer of that company, it has the same address. So it is the same company. Uh, the company's house is, is the company, formal company name and the name that we've got on here is, I, I believe, its trading name. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm quite confident it is the same company. It is um, the one at that address, which was a newly established one. I think it was probably the beginning of last year. And the website has gone, uh, is no longer live, though you can find those pages historically through that, that uh, search feature. So my, I'm pretty confident that it isn't trading. I haven't physically gone down to see the building, um, but uh, I think that uh, as it's year end, um, and uh, the, 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 there doesn't seem to be any means to contact them short of um, the Facebook page of the uh, proprietor, that's the only means I've found so far, um, then I think we probably, to, set it, to sort out the account at the end of the year, it'd be sensible to write them off at this point. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Foster and Councillor Brooks. Um, just to give you what little information I, I do know, which is not very much, but a little bit more than you. I, uh, I did query this about six months ago because I saw this come up as a bad debt. Um, I know this company held at least one <laughs> funeral in St Mary's Church. I know St Mary's Church hasn't been paid for that funeral. I know uh, the company uh, engaged an organist separately from the church. I know the organist hasn't been paid for, it, paid for his services. So Councillor Cotton was quite correct in that Factum Council is not the only organisation that hasn't been paid for the services provided to this company. However, I do think that if they held one funeral, it may have been the only one. I think and I'm also fairly sure that the rector uh, and the authorities in the church are, know who the owner of this business is. Uh, and um, it isn't a case of, of a, a fly-by-night business coming in and, and um, you know, fleecing everybody because they never intended to pay. I think, I think something genuinely went wrong. I don't know what it was, um, but I think the owner of the business is known to the church authorities. And if you want to find out 
more rather than go through the company's house routes, a, a conversation there might actually uncover. I think, Chairman, what I didn't quite understand, forgive me, Mike, what you were trying to say there. Did Newbury and Thatcher and Funeral Care Directors Limited ever exist as a limited company going concern? Okay. Could you come back on that? So, so the, the point is that the, the, the company on company's house has the same trading address as the business that will have the website uh, with this name. So I therefore believe that the, the, company, the name that we have in, in our uh, agenda is the trading name of the, the company that is registered at the company's house. And there's no way of formally finding that out. Um, I could go back to way back and see if, if that's stated at the, at the foot of the page. But I do believe that the same, the same companies, and I also remember the, the, the planning application for that um, premises came to planning and highways a year or 18 months ago. So it's a new company. It's, it's, um, had, it wasn't successful. It's just ceased trading. It hasn't formally been wound up. It hasn't got any accounts yet on Company's House. We do know from Company's House the name of the director. Uh, I think he has a, a, a track record. He, 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 is a, he was a funeral director for another company. I think he tried to set up in his own right and was unsuccessful. Um, but I think all of the evidence is that the company is no longer trading and um, short of is instigating action against him. I think the, the, the prudence, in order to resolve the accounts issue, the prudent thing is to write off that debt. I don't see how I gave way to, for, for Councillor Pike to yes. answer a question. He's now going into uh, his own point of view on this. I, I had the floor and I gave way out of courtesy. Now, we are having to ask too many questions here to be able to write this off. And I think we needed a, a longer report to answer these questions. So it, it was incorporated here. It seems to have been wound up here. Um, and therefore there's no redress. But I, I, I just, I'm uncomfortable. I find on Companies House, Newbury and Thatcham Funeral Directors Limited. That is not the name in our report tonight. Mm. And if it's the same, then we want, I, want, I want it the same on our report as it is at Companies House. <coughs> So I'm, I'm going to stop now, but I'm, I'm disturbed by the level of detail in that report. Um, and I, yes, I think we have to write it off for the sake of doing our year in accounts. But if you've got to write off money, I want clear information in the report that covers all the bases. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll take Councillor Owen Jeffrey and then Councillor Richard Cromwell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, generally speaking, a full council meeting we'll get the various reports and uh, committee reports and so on. And we act as a formal uh, processor of accepting or referring back the various issues. Uh, I think none of us like the idea of writing off legitimate debts. I think none of us enjoys that, but I did think it was going to be a 30 second process to do it. Uh, it is extremely controversial around this council uh, chamber at this moment, I think it would be entirely improper to write it off tonight with the kind of level of concern that there is. I'm not remotely in a position to say that I know whether this councillor or that councillor or the other councillor has got the right factual piece of information, but the fact that we don't know precisely whether it's the same company, we don't know the precise details that lie behind it. I think we have to ask the clerk to, through you, Mr. Mayor, to take this back to the RFO and to get fuller information. I take the point that for tidiness, uh, that we do not like to carry a bad debt through the account from one year to the next. I think on this occasion, I don't think we have any choice. I think we will have run out of time. Uh, in fact, we definitely would have run down to five months. Next, 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 next week, we're in the new financial year. Uh, so I re regret to say that I propose that we do not tonight write off this particular bad debt. That is a formal proposal, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would just ask Councillor Crumley. Yes, and I just uh, say, say uh, um, 
a few words. Um, item two says that uh, the charge was incurred in relation to the purchase of the burial site and what the phrase uses internment. It should be internment, I think. So, shouldn't it? But um, uh, uh, is there any way? I just raised a question. Is there any way of getting this burial site back? I think you know, the, the graveyard or the churchyard, we may be able to uh, recover the burial site if, of course, it hasn't been um, uh, used. For, uh, another point for future reference, and when you're dealing with a small limited company like this, when you send the bill out, make it clear you're sending it to an individual as well. Uh, so that although the um, limited company may disappear, you can still pursue the um, individual. And just say, as a matter of policy, this is what we're doing. We don't just bill small limited companies on their own. There's got to be a supporter, a couple of the directors as well. So if the company goes bust, the directors can still be pursued as those who are equally liable for the, for the debt. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take Councillor Brooks and then we'll wind this one up. Oh, I'm very happy to second Councillor Jeffrey's um, <coughs> suggestion. Uh, and in fact, we won't close the books on the year end for some weeks beyond uh, April 5th <coughs> or thereabouts. So the next council meeting, I'm sure, we'll be able to tidy that up. I, I didn't know, Councillor Cumley, that if you put the director's names on an invoice to a limited company, it implies liability of theirs. I always like, rather like the idea of limited liability, uh, and you seem to have torpedoed it. So a nice little trick there. I, I rather like that in future. But Chairman, I, I do think Councillor Jeffrey has, has uh, captured this well, and I think we should defer it. And, and if Mr. Tickle has to come to the next full meeting to explain it, well, so be it. Because, yes, it, it's it's a thousand pounds, which is enough in itself. It's a principle as well. Yeah, it's a principle of bringing information so it's thorough enough for us to make a good decision. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, Councillor Jeffrey, would you like to make that proposal? And then I'll get a second there. I'm absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Second. That was uh, the proposal that we defer, seconded by Councillor Brooks. All those in favour? Against? Okay. Well, against. Well. Okay. All right. Item 11 uh, reports from Township to Town Councillors and West Parks Councillors on Council Surgery. Um, one from Councillor Richard Crumley and Councillor Pike. To uh, <coughs> have surgery and broadcast uh, Do you have anything you wish to maybe wish to add to that? Yeah. I have some uh, some good news just handed <laughs> to me by uh, Adam Clark, and I'm uh, delighted. Uh, one of the items um, is page seven of our, our report: incident rattling manhole cover on um, Chapel Street. A continuing story of. One local resident, Mr. Panting, an old chum of uh, mine, although oh. not us, <laughs> not always been on uh, the best of uh, terms, and he would uh, ber berate me whenever he met me at surgery about this rattling manhole cover outside his house. Poor chap, this went on for a little while. Um, we were driving along the, the A4 a little while uh, later and saw traffic lights up. Um, um, I wonder what on earth was going on, and there they were repairing the manhole cover outside Mr. Panting's house. Lovely. Uh, that was uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he sent me a nice little note, <laughs> which I'm going to frame and put up in my <laughs> hallway, um, th thanking me for the, uh, my efforts, and uh, that uh, uh, he, he's delighted that uh, we have been, or we've been successful in the manhole cover and remedy. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to say anything about that? Um, I, I thank Councillor Crumley for his work on this. Uh, I now have put in, I think, I think it was literally 12 months work on it with West Berkshire Council and with BT. Uh, I think we've had it's either three or four separate dates on which BT were going to come and do it. And every time they failed, pulled out, and uh, I was really, I think, that I was only when I said I was going to go to BCTV and uh, Meridian and the New Weekly News to get BT uh, publicly shamed for continuing allowing this to happen for a year and never meeting their own dates for coming in and doing the work that we finally actually got it done with West Berkshire Council, highways officers, putting considerable pressure backed by me onto BT 
to get it done. So I'm glad, uh, Councillor Crumby, that you were in there pushing at the same time uh, and that we have got it done. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the item two was uh, myself and Councillor Lillycrop. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Say so that um, several of the uh, topics raised with us uh, related to parking, an ongoing and intractable problem. Uh, which have already been certified on the highways, but uh, there's relatively little that can be done about it because if people don't have space to park off road, if you take measures in one place, they will, it will just displace the problem rather than remove it. But we are trying to do what we can. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, that was that. So on the second one, day, myself and Councillor Lily Crop uh, conducted an online council surgery, and we had somebody come online. Oh, oh. <laughs> chatting with us for about an hour. <laughs> um, she wasn't, you know, you know, uh, going on about things all the time. It was just, she was just interested in what was going on in Hatcham and she was delighted to have been given the opportunity of going online and doing so. Um, and as a result of that, the one item that she did uh, raise, which was a bug of hers, and I think probably many people around this table will share her concerns, was the uh, the use of electric scooters mm. uh, and the young people who yeah. uh, <laughs> ride on the road, but they don't have to obey uh, the, the laws uh, of the road and everything else. So um, yeah, we're going to see if uh, what can be done. But of course, ultimately that will come back down to uh, managing that particular item. Sure, so, I think it's the speed of them. Yeah, uh, I think still standing. They have. <laughs> They have. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> be so I have so a I, I, I think it is the speed of them. I think they're the right speed. They had a speed limiter. I think they're part to play in getting people out of cars who aren't don't feel safe be balanced on a bike, but might feel safe on a scooter that trundles along at about four miles an hour. Right. The trouble is they're not limited, and that's why we've got this disquiet and anxiety about them. Yeah. I'm going to speak again tonight because I'm not going to remember to stand up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, my experience uh, um, where I shared her concern is um, I was following one lad on the scooter who had gone, he was on the inside using the cycle lane. And he just swept across in front of me, not having looked back to see if there was anything coming. He just thought he had the speed that nothing else was going to overtake him. He swept right across and then went down the high street the wrong way. Um, so it's just things like that. I think I think you know there needs to be greater awareness. And as Councillor Brooks was saying, you know, it may be, you know, with um, you know, the rising petrol prices, these may become more popular. Um, but I'm not sure with those little tiny wheels, I'd necessarily feel safer on one of those than I would on a bike. But that's just me. But um, so that was our item. That was our item online. Um, item three to appoint two councillors to conduct a uh, scheduled outreach council surgery, fun on the field, the memorial playing field on Saturday, the 28th of May. Any takers? <laughs> All at once. Right. <laughs> I hands down at the back thing. Yeah. Um, well, that's the, the next item. Uh, and if anybody has a think about it, wishes to. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. I will look at my diary and see if I'm available. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, if anybody else comes to the well, well, I will stand because I'm, I'm looking for somebody, I think, to accompany me this Saturday morning. Surgery in the Broadway. So if, if you're here now and you're volunteering for May, try and volunteer for this Saturday. I'll volunteer for this Saturday. There you oh, go. Well don't ask, you don't get. Well, done. Thank you. well, well I, I must admit, uh, because I've been feeling guilty, my council surgery was cancelled uh, <laughs> due to COVID. But, uh, that was the reason. So uh, I, I owe the council. So that's, that's my thing. Um, yeah, so again, for the 28th, if anybody feels uh, they wish to join, possibly Council of Council, then uh, please send your, your messages in. What, what time? Still day. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Um, 
So item B, reports from West Barks District Councillors. We have a councillor, Geoffrey. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, the council will probably be astounded to hear that one of the items I was going to mention has already come up in front of this council. Viz, getting that perishing manhole cover. manhole cover in Chapel Street dealt with. So we won't deal with that one again. Um, at uh, West Box Council, we had a budgeted debate, very sensibly at last, divorced from the rest of the council business, so that a over £100 million budget could actually be discussed in one meeting. Even then, I'm not sure that it was quite long enough, believe it or not. Uh, it was disappointing that although much of the meeting was uh, very much more useful and enjoyable than previous budget debates have been, even so, we couldn't find even a mild amendment with a very small amount of money involved couldn't be accepted even in principle with the detail to be subsequently uh, determined. Very disappointed that nothing that came from any opposition group could be uh, other than voted down by the administration. I found that a bit distressing, a bit unnecessary, but there we are. That's the way that politics <coughs> seems to be run at West Berkshire Council. There was a separate meeting to deal with other matters. And in that, we actually got to the point where opposition amendment that I proposed to prevent raw sewage being pumped out needlessly and continuously by the water companies actually was not voted down. We managed to get, uh, I think it was three out of five points agreed across the floor in the meeting. And therefore we've actually said as a council that we oppose pumping raw sewage into our chalk streams, into our canals, into our water courses around West Berkshire. Not before time. Now let's see the government actually pick up the, the cut and do something. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well said. Well, no, no, no. Well, he quite rightly took my thunder, but well, it wasn't my thunder to have. I would like to congratulate Councillor Jeffrey on that change of an emotion and putting teeth into something because uh, it is a tragedy. Uh, that is, we are seeing more and more pollution. I mean, particularly, uh, I think we have to keep in mind in Thatcham, we have seen many disasters of tankers, eight, 10 tankers turning up to flush out um, meadows uh, and streams and the river. And it, it's got to stop. It really is disgusting. I, I, I find that the whole saga a warrant we really need to make sure that our waters here and um, Thatcham is quite rightly famous for the fishing we need to preserve our rivers and these dis regular discharges I think it's something like 8,000 a day in the country it's terrible we need to stop it and, and uh, Councillor Jeffrey's motion I think goes a, a little way to actually doing that thank you yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you uh, any other West Parks councillors? No, thank you. Uh, item C, reports by town council appointed outside bodies. Councillor Rose, what's on that? Nothing to report. No, thank you. Um, Councillor Cole is not here. No, which I. Okay. So, all ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Do I have to stand up now? No, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs>